have fun. We'll let him have fun. It won't go on. It won't go on the books till next week. Aren't you? for next week. Whenever you're ready. I'm just waiting. Good morning. I knew we'd have a light crowd, but um, everybody's full of Christmas cheer and relaxing at home, and I, I guess we all understand that, right? Okay, by way of announcements, this arrangement is from the Rich Lorenzen family in memory of Rich. So um, I very special blessing that they would share that with us. And then another announcement is that next week we will start taking on the first Sunday of every month a Heifer International loose change offering to fill up our pig and see where we can, can make that go. So make sure and clean out your purses, your, your, your pockets, your, that cup in your car, um, wherever it is that you throw that loose change and on the top of your dresser, in your sock drawer, I don't know. Um, so just clean it out and, and we'll take care of that for you. Just one thing off your list that you don't have to be taking care of. And of course then rebuild it every month, but you know, we will take care of it. So with that, it looks as though we are having some good news from our choir.
but in the heart. Whoops, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. How about good news? Well, glory to God. Glory to God, everybody. <laughs> Just read the script. Okay. Well, we've got good, good news, good news are coming. Good, good news, good news are coming. Good, good news, good news are coming about that baby boy. Good, good news, we we'll sing about the Savior. Good, good news, we're we'll praising the Messiah. Good, good news, we'll shout about the baby born in Bethlehem. A tiny good news, news, good news, good news, good news, good news, good news, beneath the stars so bright. Well, we've got good, good news, good news are coming. Good news, good news are coming. Good news, good news are coming about that baby boy. Well, we've got good, good news. Let's sing about the Savior. Good news with praise and the Messiah. Good news, let's shout about the baby born in Bethlehem. He's born in Bethlehem. See. Thank you, choir. That was wonderful. I just always appreciative of what you guys do for, for us every Sunday morning. Thank you. Now, if you will bow your head in, in our opening prayer. Send, O oh God, into the darkness of this troubled world the light of your Son. Let the star of your hope touch the minds of all people with the bright beams of mercy and truth. And so direct our steps that we may ever walk in the way revealed to us as the shepherds of Bethlehem walked with joy to the manger where he dwelled, who now and ever reigns in our hearts, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now, if uh, you will stand as able and we will have the hymn, this little light of mine, and that'll be in the hymnal at 585.
may be seated. <clears throat> Now, the Psalter reading this morning will be a um, responsive if you will read the dark print and I'll read the light print. But all the things are creator blessed. Alleluia. 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 Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise the Lord in the heights. Praise, Praise the Lord, Lord, all his angels. Praise, Praise the, the Lord, Lord, all his hosts. Praise the Lord, sun and moon. Praise the Lord, all shining stars. Praise the Lord, highest heavens, and all waters above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord who commanded, and they were created. Who established them forever and ever, and fixed their bounds which cannot be passed. Praise the Lord from the earth, sea monsters, and all deeps. Fire and hail, snow and smoke, stormy winds fulfilling God's command. Mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars. Beasts and all cattle, creeping things and flying birds. Kings of the earth and all peoples, princes and all rulers of the earth. Young men and maidens together, old men and children. Let them praise the name of the Lord, whose name alone is exalted, whose glory is above earth and heaven. God has raised up a horn for his people. Praise for all his faithful ones. For the people of Israel who are near their God, praise the Lord. This is the word of God for the people of God. Praise be to God. Now, if you will sing as Abel, we'll uh, sing the hymn, Here I Am, Lord, and it's uh, page 593 in the hymnal. And as you know, we, we struggle sometimes with these recordings, like that last one was a banjo number, was kind of fun. <laughs> well, this one has some, uh, some uh, uh, spaces in between the verses, and I, I can't even describe to you where they're at, um, but that's why I'm up here leading. So. There's a, the intro, intro to this is pretty long, and then all of a sudden we're in. So, so just try and follow me as best you can, and we'll go from there.
You may be seated. Scripture reading this morning comes from Luke, second chapter, verses 41 and 42. Each year his parents went to Jerusalem for the Passover festival. When he was 12 years old, they went up to Jerusalem according to their custom. Now, if the children will come forward, I'll be pastor to that. Uh, she's got a great message for you this morning and really for all of us. There for a little while, I thought I was going to have to ask Will and Zach to come forward. <laughs> but I see that we have other little people here, so this is always exciting to me. Good morning. You look beautiful. Oh, okay, thanks. Thanks, Alan. <laughs> I don't think you qualify, but okay. You can see the kid right there. Okay. <laughs> Hi. Hi, Milo. Hey guys, how was Christmas? Good. Did you get a lot of things that you thought you liked? He did. Oh my! Wow, that is good. Santa came down. Hmm. Have you have you ever gotten kind of like thinking that what if he doesn't come? Yeah, yeah. There's. Um, I I remember seeing something one time where somebody said they came down the stairs, a little girl, and she saw the gifts, and she said, "He thought I was nice." So, <laughs> you know, I can get them even when I've been naughty. But no, that's not where I'm going with this. I have a question for y'all. When you've been with mom, dad, grandparents, in a store, have you ever gotten lost? Have you gotten lost? What happened? Um, I was in Target with my sister. My mom went somewhere, but we were just lost. And then um, a worker came over and said, are you lost? And we said, yes. Yeah. Yeah, remember in Target? <laughs> OK, so we're kind of giving something away here, I can tell. Um, yeah, and so when, when mom finally caught up with you there in Target, what did she say? She said she was in the baby aisle the whole time. She was in the baby aisle the whole time. Imagine that. Um, okay, did it kind of scare you a little bit? Yeah, I think it really kind of scared mom too. I know that that has happened for, to me when I was with my kids, and man, I'd come and find them and they'd say, what's the deal? You're supposed to stay with me. And they'd be off doing their own thing, you know, because they have, you know, you're blessed with a mind that stays right on the, fo the focus that you have. And usually that focus is the toy section, which is always my first one to go to. And then as the girls got a little older, I remember I'd find them in the clothing section or where there were earrings. Yes. So at some time, we all get to feeling a little lost. And sometimes we have to be reminded to stay with our parents. And you know, this kind of happened to Jesus too. Huh, I know, surprise. You know, th this person who we thought would never defy his parents, would never do anything that would be, make him lost and it happened. So we're gonna hear about it today, okay? Well, you all are going to hear an amazing story in, um, in Children's Church. Or, yes, I'm almost sorry that we can't have Children's Church in here today because it's really a very good story. And you're all going to be participate in a little bit of history today. And maybe the adults will too, all right? Thanks for volunteering that information. So where were you in Target? Oh, we were beside a worker. But oh, you went to check out. Good deal. All right. Let's have a word of prayer, shall we? Father, we thank you for our young people. We thank you that they remind us that how easy it is 
to just stay focused on something so much that we lose where we're at, that we get even a little bit lost in this thing called life. And help them to always be centered, centered on you in their hearts and their souls, and that they might flourish all the days of their life. In Jesus' name. Amen. All right, here we go. Oh, you're taking the, the odd piece. Okay. All right. Oh, yes, here we are. <laughs> yes, please. They're so cute. Well, Merry Christmas. A little late, but Merry Christmas. Um, for some reason, the rest of the scripture didn't get into this um, reading today, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to add to it. So we hear that he was 12 years old. They went to Jerusalem according to their custom. And after the festival was over, they were returning home, but the boy Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem. His parents didn't know it. Supposing that he was among their band of travelers, they journeyed on for a full day while looking for him among their family and friends. When they didn't find Jesus, they returned to Jerusalem to look for him. After three days, they found him in the temple. He was sitting among the teachers, listening to them and putting questions to them. Everyone who heard him was amazed by his understanding and his answers. When his parents saw him, they were shocked. His mother said, Child, why, why, were you treated like, why have you treated us like this? Listen, your father and I have been worried. We've been looking for you. And Jesus replied, Why were you looking for me? Didn't you know that it was necessary for me to be in my father's house? But they didn't understand what he had said to them. Jesus went down to Nazareth with them and was obedient to them. His mother cherished every word in her heart. Jesus matured in wisdom in years and in favor with, the God, with God and with people. And that is the word of God for the people of God. Praise be to God. Man, I don't know about you, but it just feels like yesterday he was born. And here now he's 12 years old. He's 12 years old, and he's sounding like every teenager I've ever known. He's got a little bit of attitude. And, um, you know, of course, things were a little different maybe back there. And things may seem a little contrary in this 21st century idea of, you know, like you're going on a trip and you forget your child. Sounds like home alone, doesn't it? And even he chooses wise counsel with the guy next door in the story of home alone. And so Jesus did just that too. He sought wise counsel. So Jesus in his aloneness, in finding this holy conversation that he's engaging with the elders in the synagogue, the learned, the teachers, he's asking questions, he's listening. Well, it's probably the other way around. Listening, asking questions, and interjecting where he feels there needs maybe to be some clarification. It's probably happened to all of us at one time or another. Even for just a minute or two, we lost one of our children in Walmart or the grocery store or wasn't at the neighbor's where they were supposed to be. And we were worried, and when we finally found them, we were just a little bit testy. Just a little bit. I remember um, Sarah was probably six, and she had a hard time with L's. Fun when your mother's name is Linda. Um, anyhow, she had a hard time with L's. And our next door neighbor, Roy, had lost his wife. And Roy had this, I'd been to his house, and he had this amazing ability to wear headphones that were tuned into this TV while that TV was playing too. Now, I can't do that, but Roy could. Well, Sarah, being the social animal that she is, unbeknownst to me, knocks on the door. Roy enters as her come in, and she sits down in one recliner, and he's in the other, and they're passing these headphones back and forth. Well, finally, he goes, do you think you need to call your mother? So she calls me and says, I'm at Rory's house. Well, I'm thinking, he, she has trouble with else. So she's at Lori's house. So dinner comes. She's not at Lori's house. I have every child, every neighbor searching for this child. 
And finally, she comes walking out of Roy's house, and um, she's just had the time of her life and can't figure out why we're all upset. So we, um, we thanked Roy for his babysitting abilities. And so it is that upon finding him that Mary who just yesterday gave birth and listened to what the shepherds told her and the wise men and the angels and Simeon in the temple ask as any mother would in frustration and a bit of heat, what in the world do you think you were doing? Didn't you realize we were packing and getting ready to leave? Wake up. And very paraphrased here, I can hear Jesus saying, thank you for being a wonderful parental unit but I have a parental unit that is greater than you. And I'm about, to, about doing what I was called to do in his name. And so in 21st century teen speak, you can't tell me what to do. No parent here has ever heard that, right? You can't tell me what to do. And yet our hearts can't help but go out in compassion for Mary and Joseph. Because those times when our ki we can't find our kids or things aren't going right, it freaks us out. And three days is a long time. There was no police department, television and radio, no Amber Alert on the phone. You know, can't you see it? 12-year-old seen riding on a camel south out of Jerusalem, possible abduction. I mean, that, this is not going to happen. Nevertheless, there were some unsavory people who were always looking for a slave or two. And boys coming of age would have been a good target. It was fraught with the same issues that we have today. Because after all, as scripture tells us, nothing new has happened under the sun. But this boy, important as all children are, has a special importance to the secret of Mary and Joseph. This boy is filled with the living God. This takes failing parental responsibility to new heights. Yet, maybe in this text we miss something even more important. The Son of God is sitting in the temple amongst the teachers, who are the biblical scholars, and he's asking questions. I've always kind of thought it was that he was telling them, but the scripture says he's asking questions. First, understand that these scholars were learned men of the Torah, the scripture, the scrolls, the history of the Israelites, and it has been their lifelong pursuit to be well-versed in what it is that they know of God. They would not be people who would be questioned, typically, and especially by a young person. Children, as we all know, are unpredictable and ask unpredictable questions. Have you ever watched me during a children's sermon? That is the most fluid time of my life. You know, I never know what's going to come out of their mouths, and you just kind of, it's that herding cat thing. And then there are those that, whoa, I never thought about it that way. And that's the very thing that is going on between Jesus and the scholars. Everything they thought they knew was being challenged, just as I get challenged with the younger people. I am certain they didn't leave the I am certain they didn't leave the temple thinking God didn't exist. Far be it from that. But they did leave somehow challenged to examine what they always thought they knew. A friend recently said to me about any process, any process that we have in thinking, any process that begins something new in our brain pan. And his brain pan is water conservation efforts in California, Southern California, because he runs a waterworks place there in, in the southern part of the state. And he said to me, it is hard to unknow what you know. I think that's why we have a hard time changing our habits, changing the way we've always done it. Oh, we've never said that here, have we? 
So we talked about all the things throughout time that we as people have had to unknow. The earth isn't flat. Not all marriages are of God. Women are called by God to do the work of God. Thank you, Jesus. Salvation is more than a commitment to the church, but a commitment to allow God to create brokenness and to recreate wholeness, his wholeness. There are parts of the Bible that I have questioned over time. I'm sure you have too. You've been reading through scripture and you went, huh, what did that mean? You know, like that whole second creation story back to back in Genesis 1 and 2, where one is orderly. On this day, this happened. On this day, this happened. On this day, this happened. And the other one is like, oh, God's playing in the sand. And he picks up some sand and puts a little water with it, makes a little clay, you know, gets it going. And he goes, huh, I think I'll make some people. And then he makes Adam and he goes, oh, isn't he cute? Where do I put him now? And so then he goes about making everything else. And then he goes, okay, now play. You're in charge of everything. And, you know, and he says it, that it's good all the way through it. It's good. But when does it get better? <laughs> when women come. <laughs> just, thought I'd, just thought I'd let you know that one. Okay. Um, and then there's, there's other ones. There's other ones where, you know, when Cain is being sent out from this great community of family and, and, and he's afraid for his for his very being, because there's other people out there that are going to kill him. And I go, huh, where did the other people come from? You mean there were others? I thought it was just them. Yeah, I've had to unlearn some things. And then there's this gnarly story in Judges 19 about a slaughter of a bunch of innocent people because one man wanted to cover up his own sin. Man, I don't, why, why do we need that there? That's kind of scary bad. And then there's Lot's wife looking back. We all do that, don't we? Who here hasn't looked back? We used to do it this way. You know, that's how we've always done it. Well, what do you think you're doing? You're looking back. We look back when the road gets hard and when what we are doing in God's name becomes a little bit of a struggle. And we look back and think, well, it was easier then, even when it wasn't. We still think it was. Thank God for the blood of Christ. Lot's wife just didn't have the blood of Christ to go with that. And there's many more, so many more, and I'm sure you have your own. It is in the midst of our conversation that I began with my friend's husband that I began to realize that what I think I know, I don't. I have all the, I just don't have all the facts. I definitely do not think the, ways, uh, the way others think, not all the time. But also, and more importantly, I don't always think as God thinks. I do not have God's eyes and ears. I only know what I think I know. In fact, somebody asked me today some question, and I said, I'm only the pastor. You know, I don't know everything. And, um, and so I'm going to, that might be a sign that I now put over the door. I'm only the pastor. I don't know everything. So, you know, sometimes as I'm driving to Waterloo on 21, near that Wolf Creek area, my signal on my car says says how strong or how weak um, my phone is at that time. Oh, I've got some knots. Good. I'm not the only one. If it is cloudy during that time, if I'm on the phone, which is not like this. I can talk over my car, so don't, don't worry. Um, my calls get dropped. I always feel bad because I don't want anyone to think that I just hung up on them. You know, I'm not being, trying to be rude. It's just that, and sometimes I'll go, I think I'm going to lose you, and then boom, I lose them. But on sunny days, I can talk to everybody all the way to California, and they can still hear me, and I still only have one bar. I don't even understand how that works, but I like it. So in those times, if I lose someone, hmm, it's a disconnect. I was purposeless. I purposefully ended that call, or they did. I think this is how we view Scripture. Our minds and thoughts and dogma and precept cloud our thinking 
of what God is saying to us because that's what I was taught when I was in confirmation kind of moments. Well, that what you were taught in confirmation, let's face it, you were 12. They were not going to give you the whole enchilada, right? You would not have been able to absorb all that. In other words, we simplify things. Jesus in this story is at that confirmation age. And he is challenging and questioning what is being told to him by the scholars. He discerns that they are understanding scripture like we do a conversation where it is about to be dropped, where it's hit and miss, where you're only catching a couple words. And I'm reminded of that, that commercial for, I don't know what it's for, good tele telephone service anyhow where the woman is getting ready to go to a party and she's all excited that she's going to go to this party and she calls a friend and says what should I wear and, and somewhere in there it, it becomes a costume and she's the only one that shows up in a costume you know she does it pretty good but you know she's the only one because we didn't get the whole message and when we take the lid off of our thinking when all there is is blue sky when we choose to question what we think we know we allow God to speak to us through God's word in new ways. We hear the entire message. And sometimes we don't like what God has said. And we, not God, disconnect. We turn and look back like Lot's wife and say, hmm, it was easier when I had a permanent house, in our case, a definitive thought, Instead of traveling far afield, in other words, unknowing what we thought we knew, to arrive in a place that we have never been before. Even if there was no church, no body of worshipers in your old place, you still want to go back to what is familiar, to what we think we know, to the sketchy phone call. This text well, this text is a text that has a great many players, and as parents, we tend to go to the aid of Mary and Joseph. But what if we, tr this is truly about a young man with a clear vision of what Scripture is saying. I have wondered many times if amongst the teachers to whom Jesus questioned were those who left the Sanhedrin, the sect of the Pharisees and the Sadducees, to become followers of Christ. I wonder if these questions and then the life of this man in the next 20 years showed them that what they thought they knew was really a, a dropped call, a sketchy call. And only through Jesus, the Son of God, could we peer into these verses and breathe new life. We all know that when in doubt, we are to pray which is not a bad plan, to open communication as Wesley understood it, because it is in part four parts. The largest part is scripture. And then there's the next part that is experience. How are we experiencing the scripture? When are we having those aha moments that may have made us go, oh, well, that was different than what I expected. That didn't happen like I thought it was going to happen. And then there's that part reason, not our reasoning, God's reasoning, because we know that God makes no mistakes. And then there is that fourth part of this quadrilateral, the part where we think we know now to know as God would tell it. Not our traditions, not our political, not our social principles, not our social traditions, but God's social traditions. So I think that the best thing that we can do with moving forward in all things, all aspects of life, is to give God a call. Because I have found that the line is never busy. Amen. And so we've all been through this.
difficult time of doing an offering with the, with the doxology, so I'm going to tell you just to stand right now because that doxology starts quick. And so, here we go. Indeed, amen. Thank you, Lord, for all that you have blessed us with. Thank you for fresh understanding. Thank you for traditions that we have held near and dear to us and that we can look at them and turn them over and understand that there's newness in it. Even the newness in this thing called offering, all the ways that it reaches out, it's not just a band-aid to keep us going. But it's, a band, it's, it's more than a Band-Aid. It's an entire first aid kit to keep the world in connection with you. And so we ask that you bless this gift and the giver alike for all that it does. In Jesus' name, amen. Um, now, our choir is coming forward with glory to God. And you may be seated, and this is, I understand Tom said it's madrigal form. Okay. I'm not quite sure what that means. That was nice, thank you. <laughs> joys and concerns. It feels like it's been weeks since we've had joys and concerns. Well, maybe it has. We had a pageant and then we had a Christmas uh, Eve and we didn't have uh, room for it in that. So it has been weeks. So we should have lots to be joyful about. If it's okay, I'll start us off. Um, a few, a few, Months ago, I think, I talked to you about Alicia Scent. Um, those of you who have lived here for quite a while, Bev and Norbert Scent lived down by the park, 
and they had uh, Alicia and Alana. Alicia is 45, and a few months ago she was given a terminal cancer diagnosis. Well, a miracle has happened. She found a medical team down in Texas. She went down just the last couple weeks, just got home, I think last, within the last few days. But they think they did surgery where they thought it was not going to be able to be, it wasn't operable. They got, they think they have it all. And so just a Christmas miracle, and she's back home with her family. So praise God. Amen. Generous God. I've got something I can share. This is John Teal, outgoing finance chair. And I just want to take a minute to thank the congregation for your generous giving. I take no credit for the way our finances have turned out, but through the pandemic, we have done uh, nothing short of miraculous uh, in, our, in our finances. And whether you give a small gift many times a year, a large gift many times a year, a small gift once a year, or a large gift once a year. All of it is appreciated and uh, our, from the committee, our sincere thank you. Uh, I'm outgoing. Ryan Schuhart will be taking over for me after the first of the year, and I will be taking over SPRC and try to get the pastor in line. And uh, <laughs> try, try. But I also want to thank uh, Another great joy that we have in this church, and that is, uh, and she, naturally she'd leave right when I'm going to say something, but Debbie, our treasurer, I don't think she gets near the credit she deserves. She is, uh, she is beyond uh, rock solid with our finances. Anytime we try to spend money without having a good reason, we can't. Uh, she's, she's just great, and she does wondrous things with our with our finances. So a sincere thank you to Debbie. That's it. I know that I probably shared this with you, just dovetailing on John there, that we are the anomaly. Um, there's churches in our conference who are just struggling. And we are the anomaly. We, we are blessed. And so here's what may be a clue. We are blessed. When speaking of anything that goes on in this church, it is never I, it is always we. Whatever you're doing, it's we. We in outreach. We in children's church. We in worship. We in communion. We are a we group. And I think whenever we take the focus off of a single person, off of a, a singular event, and we, we just say it is all of us, we're all connected into that. And to that, I really give you credit. I give you credit for having the mind of we, that we are in this together. And so, um, and also to dovetail off of John, I just want you to know that it will be my greatest endeavor as your pastor to try to get John in line as <laughs> SPRC. <laughs> Amen. Good luck. Yeah. Yeah. Rots are right. Pam has written me notes about um, what I need to be doing. So, praise God. Generous God. Okay. And isn't there something that happened in the Brandt family that maybe not everyone knows? There might have been, yes. Linda. There just might have been. <laughs> yeah. Unto us, a child is born. Unto us, a son is given. I paraphrase. Mm, a little. A little. Yeah, and I've asked these fine young gentlemen here beside me to help me with all the details. But what was it? December 17th? 18th, see, there I go, I'm wrong already, 18th, at about 9.53 in the morning at Mercy One, uh, we got a new grandson. He's our third grandchild. His name is Noah, 
Philip Biederman. We love him to death already. <laughs> uh, I love that name, Noah. We might have sung about him before here in this church. Uh, his birth weight was seven pounds, eight ounces. Thank you, Will. He was 20, 20 point something inches long. It's too bad my missus isn't here because she usually helps me with details like that. Well, there for a little while, I was wondering if Will was in the delivery room because he's got more of the facts than anybody. But uh, he is healthy. Mom is doing great. Dad is falling into line with their, it's their first child and they're doing great. Everybody's healthy. Praise God. Amen. Generous God. But really, you weren't the Brandt family I was looking at. Oh, yes. Because there, that there's, <laughs> there's more. There. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> That's okay, Tom. It's not all about me. <laughs> we were having a joyous time yesterday celebrating Christmas, and about 3.30 in the afternoon, the door opened, and Katie walked in. We didn't know she was coming, so <laughs> thanks for coming, Katie. Generous God. Yes, there are miracles in Christmas. All right. Anyone else? Who else does Walter have visiting him? <laughs> you forgot someone, Walter. But we knew Jessica and Lance were coming. <laughs> we're glad they're both here, and it's been a joyous time. Thank you. Thanks, Uncle John. <laughs> so with that, let us just take a moment. Father, in the busyness that is called this season, we are reminded repeatedly to stay connected. Connected with one another as family joins and, and surprises us and brings us new babies. We understand that, that whole connectedness of, of life and that that life spills over into our church life and into our community life and that there is always room for more. And that maybe we revisit the things that we knew, that we thought we knew, to know new things, to expand our horizons in places we never thought we would ever go, and to hear your word through a new, fresher eye and a new expanding eye that we might hear our call into this, into this new frontier of moving forward in a new way that opens our hearts and our minds to receive all that it is that you have for us. All the blessing, we understand blessing and we share that blessing and we all our understanding that we are a connected group and yet in that connect connectedness we also desire for more to be connected with us not just because it's us but because of Jesus because of his message that that's birth brought that there would be salvation that there would be hope and love and faith and joy and a way in which to be part of the kingdom of God and that 
this being part of the kingdom of God is not something that happened to us 12, when we were 12. But maybe it's 12 hours ago, 12 minutes ago, that we remember that you are ever present and ever desiring to be near us and to teach us and to lead us and to expand us and to give us our daily bread. And so it is that we pray this prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. And now we have another hymn, Go Tell It on the Mountains. And I'm sure Deb is going to lead us, right? Maybe. I'm so not, but it's, it starts right out. <laughs> Please stand. I believe there is no introduction to this one. tell it on the mountain and whatever your mountain is go tell it and tell that God is good God is great and God is everywhere and salvation is made through Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit is our guide and our comforter that we may indeed in the midst of all that there is go in peace amen